We're, we're going to be starting a fast this Wednesday. Say with me, fast this Wednesday. And for some of you that have never done a fast, it's a really exciting time to go into battle with your personal wants and wishes and saying no to food so you can start saying yes to God. And it's a time of de developing a discipline, a discipline of, of telling our bodies and our minds what to do instead of our bodies and our emotions and our minds and circumstances telling us what to do. And either you're going to have some self-control or you're going to be under the control of something totally different. God has created you to be free and be able to make good decisions and make progress and have a relationship with him and get a vision and carry it out and finish it. And the reason I just said that, there's so many of us in this room or maybe online, you have a vision, you have dreams. But there's something always stops you from fulfilling those dreams and visions in your life. And what stops you it's not usually something on the outside. Now, you could blame the outside. You could blame a person. But usually what stops you is you. You know, the devil has no power unless you walk with him and agree with him and give him permission to operate in your life. You know, you can resist the enemy and he will flee. Or you can welcome the enemy and he will stay. So fasting is just saying, I choose God over my fleshly desires. I choose God over what I want. I choose God over sin. I choose God over the addiction. I choose God over the anger. I choose God over the fear. I choose God over the greed. I just choose God over my wife, over my husband, over the thing. I just choose God first. And, another, and some of those things I mentioned are good things. But what we're saying is, God, you're going to be my leader in 2021. Nothing else is going to lead my life but you. If you've never had a year where God has led you the whole year, you're getting ready for the best year of your life. Now, I'm not saying you want to have challenges because that would be ignorant. I'm not saying that there won't be difficulties. I'm not saying that you might not get your heart broken. I'm not saying, I'm not saying none of that. All I'm saying is in all that, you would have went through that anyways. The only difference, this year you're going to have peace in it. This year you're going to have victory in it. This year you're, gonna, you're, gonna have, you're still going to be, con, you're still have a, a joy and contentment. This year you can still have a sense of direction. You're moving forward. So today what we're going to do, we're going to go to Matthew chapter 4. And the title of this message is really simple, Jesus Fasted. We're going to start our 21-day fast this Wednesday. Say it with me, this Wednesday. So this Wednesday, we're going to start our 21-day fast. It's, we're going to do it all online. For those who are online, you're already in position. For those that are here on, in person, online on our app, we're going to turn our YouTube or Facebook. Tune in at 7 o'clock, and we're going to start the fast together. 21 day, days of drawing close to God. Now, what we're going to do in this next few moments, we're going to read chap Matthew chapter 4, 1 through 11. I'm going to go through these verses one, one, one verse at a time. And we're going to get, gain some knowledge and insight about fasting, but also some benefits of fasting as we cover the scripture. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted there by the devil. Now, Jesus was led by the Spirit of God. It, it does not say that he was led by anything. He wasn't led by emotions. He wasn't led by his hunger. He wasn't led by his personal desires. He was led by the Spirit of God. Now, the Spirit of God doesn't lead you necessarily where you want to go. He leads you where you need to go. To be spirit-led, that means you're going to have to trust God. And he doesn't always tell you every detail of where he's taking you. Because if he told you every detail, you'll chicken out out of the adventure. And I would say this, out of the process. He's leading you. He's directing you. 
It's one moment at a time. But Jesus was led by the Spirit of God. Now, why does it say he was led by the Spirit? Because it's the same way that we live out our belief or our faith. We're led by the Spirit. We're led by the Word. We're not led by our anger. We're not led by our fears. We're not led by our addictions. We're not led by the past abuse. We're not led by our haters. We're not led by, we're not led by social media. We're not led by society. We are led by the Spirit. He succeeded in his assignment. Lisa mentioned that before you were born, God knew you. He formed you. And every day of your life was already pre-recorded. That means God has a destiny for your life, a purpose for your life. But there's also a devil that will do everything he can to take you off your destiny, take you out of your purpose, take you out of fulfilling your assignment on earth. Say it with me, Warfare. Some might think, well, I don't even believe in devils. Well, this is what I would say. You don't have to believe in a devil for him to exist, just like you don't have to believe in God for him to exist. But I would say, well, can you explain to me the devil? This is what I'll explain to you. Have you ever had a thought, a negative thought that was overwhelming? Have you ever had a thought that made you feel like you're nothing, you're unworthy. Have you ever felt anxiety to the point you thought you were going to die? Have you ever been so tormented at night that your mind is racing and you can't rest? Have you ever been in a room with a lot of people and still feel absolutely lonely? Have you ever been so depressed and hopeless that you felt there is no future. And every thought that was coming to you was verifying and backing up and establishing, yes, there's no future for you. That is the devil. The devil comes to you with thoughts, ideas, lies about you, about your value, about your worth. You thought it was your thought. But actually, it came from a spiritual realm. There's an enemy that hates you and wants to destroy you, wants to destroy your family, wants to destroy your purpose, wants to destroy your integrity, wants to destroy your character, wants to destroy your dreams. We're in a real fight. So Jesus was led by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. You can be led by the Spirit of God. How can I be led by the Spirit of God? The first step is receiving the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is everywhere, but not necessarily is the Spirit of God living in you. When you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the Spirit of Jesus comes and lives inside of you. And if you've not experienced that, it's, this is what is described that in the Bible. It's described as being born again. It's an actual moment. It's your second birthday. You had your physical birthday. And there was a day that you made up your mind. I'm empty on the inside. Something's missing. I know I've made some mistakes. I am a sinner. Jesus, forgive me. Jesus, set me free. Jesus, come live inside of me. And this is what will happen. He'll come in with his spirit. The spirit of Jesus. And then you'll begin to live a new life. And you're going to begin to hear another voice. I'm not saying you're going to be cuckoo. But you will hear another voice in your conscience, in your soul, that will begin to lead you. You used to be able to go to the club and dance with whoever you want to dance with and, and do all kinds of dances that aren't appropriate here in the church. You used to be able to just after the party go with someone and 
just go to their house. You don't even know who they are. Sleep with them. I just got real deep there. And wake up in the morning and not know their name. But something happened now. You stepped into the club and now there's a voice saying, this ain't place ain't for you. That's not part of your new life. This has nothing to do with your future. This has nothing to do with your destiny. This has nothing to do with your identity. This has nothing to do with what I've called you to be and who I've called you to be. You used to say yes to things now that now you're all of a sudden saying no. And it's not that someone taught you. You have the Holy Spirit inside of you that's starting to lead you. It's possible. And when God leads you, he's leading you to your purpose. He's leading you, I'm going to lead you, he's leading you to a happy place. He's leading you to peace. He's leading you to victory. He's leading you, he's leading you to, to greatness. He is leading you. When the Holy Spirit is leading you, just trust him. He's going to take you to where you've always wanted to be. You didn't even know where you wanted to be, but he knows where you want to be. And he's going to take you there. So let's keep on going here. The Spirit of God drew, led, I mean, then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted there by the devil. The first place that Jesus, the Spirit of God, drew Jesus, he drew him into a wilderness. Like I told you, he doesn't always lead you to where you want to go. He leads you where you need to go. Now that word wilderness is very simple. It just means this, an alone place. The Spirit of God is still leading us to an alone place. You know what an alone place is? A place where you're spending time alone with God. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to lead us to an alone place. Some time with God. During this fast, we're cutting ourselves off of food. And I'll tell you how we're going to fast. There's three different ways we're going to fast. But we're also going to start de developing a discipline of spending alone time with God every day. Someone in here saying, I feel so lonely, baby, I could die. They should make a song like that. <laughs> I'm so lonely. And you're thinking, what I need is a man in my life. And there's, there's someone else saying, I'm so lonely, I need a girl in my life. And then you're thinking, when you meet that girl or you meet that guy, you're going out with them for two weeks. You got butterflies. You can't wait till they call. And then you, say, you tell them something like this, you make me complete. You're the missing piece in my life, oh my Lord. This was destiny. How crazy it is a few months later when everybody shows their true colors, you realize that this wasn't destiny, this was crazy. But now you're addicted to a dysfunctional relationship and you stick it out, some of you, for years and you can't get out of it because you don't know how to be alone. Being alone freaks you out. But until you're content, being alone... With God alone, you're not ready for a relationship. God wants us in a place that we get everything that we need in our alone 
wilderness times. The Spirit of God is leading Jesus into a lonely or a lone place. Your alone time with God on a daily basis is the most important time you have all day. You'll get more done in 15 minutes with God than you will a whole lifetime without Him. If the Holy Spirit can lead you to a alone time with God, he can lead you to your husband. He can lead you to your future wife. He can lead you to greatness. He can lead you to happiness. He can lead you to peace. He can lead you to success. He can lead you to freedom. But he's saying, can I even lead you to alone time with me without your Facebook, without, without your YouTube, without the movie, without the music, just me and you for a moment? He went into the wilderness, long time, to be tempted by the devil. Now, that's crazy. <laughs> so you mean the, the Spirit of God took, led Jesus, led Jesus into the wilderness, and then he's bringing a devil into this? Why would Jesus, why would the Holy Spirit bring a devil into this? Why would Jesus have to face the devil. This is what I've learned. How can you have a victory until you start facing your enemy? Jesus needed to face the devil that defeated Adam. That devil that's been tormenting mankind, Jesus came to destroy him. Not for him, he came to destroy him for us. So the, the Spirit of God took Jesus into a battle zone. But, but I want you to get this. That word led means this. To, to lead by accompanying into a place. To lead through. When the Spirit of God is leading you, He doesn't lead you to a destination like an Uber and drop you off. He leads you and accompanies you through the whole process. What he's saying, everybody might have left you. You might be overwhelmed. But don't you forget, the, the one that's with you is greater than anything that you're facing. I'm leading you through this battle, through this valley. You're going to get through because I'm with you. Yeah. Someone say this with, say with me. God is with me. When you're led by the Spirit, he's just walking you through the battlefields of life, not to destroy you, but for you to come out with a victory, for you to be a champion. See, God doesn't just want you to overcome. He wants you to overcome so you can help some people overcome. Whatever battle you're in right now, the Spirit of God is not perplexed or, or surprised. Like, whoa, I didn't know that we're going to go through that one. He goes, I knew you were going to go through it, and I'm leading you through this thing. So stop agreeing with the devil and tell, while he's telling, oh, this is too much. It's not too much. I'm with you. And if I'm with you, there's nothing that could come against you. You're okay. Let's keep going. So he led him into a battlefield. He led him into the wilderness, into, into a battle. Jesus faced... Every temptation that you and I have faced or will, or will ever face. The only difference between him and every single one of us, we face temptations and we gave in to them. And as you look back at the temptations you gave yourself, you gave yourself to, this I do know. You regret it. And you start saying something like this. How could I have been so naive? How could I have been so dumb? 
A blind man could have seen this coming a mile away. I was warned. I went to church. I knew it was wrong, but I did it anyway. Now, I'm not putting anybody down. I'm talking about us. I'm talking about me. There's nobody here that has made a bad decision on purpose. Now, that hasn't made a bad decision on purpose, I'm talking about. I almost messed up there. We've made bad decisions, known they're bad decisions, because we were tempted, because the temporary pleasure was so tempting. You knew it was a bad idea, but you did it. Jesus knew it was a bad idea, and the only difference, he didn't do it. Every temptation that Jesus faced, the difference between him and every one of us, he said no to it, he didn't give in to it, and he overcame every single temptation. Why did he overcome every single temptation in this fast? He overcame every single temptation in this fast to conquer everything that has conquered us. You know basically what he said? Son, kick back. Daughter, kick back. Let me throw down now. Let me show you how it's done. And I'm going to get the belt for you. And come on. I'm going to get the championship belt for you. And I'm going to put it on you. And when I put it on you, you're going to have my strength. You're going to have my ability. You're going to be able to face the same exact temptation. But this time, in 2021, it's not going to conquer you. Because I'm going to help you conquer what's been conquering you. Say with me, Jesus, Jesus. Help, me. help me. He goes, I got you. I got you. We're good. I already faced everything you're facing, and it didn't conquer me. And now, as a believer, I live in you. So since I live in you, you can do what I can do through my strength. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I do not have to give in to that temptation anymore. Do you know why some of us don't conquer our temptations? Because you still think you have to. Someone lied to you in church and told you, you know the issue that you have? You'll always have that issue. But you know, that's just the way life is. But Jesus did not save you so you would stay the way you are. He saved you so you can be like him. And you can only be like him with the spirit of God in you. Of course, we'll make mistakes, but get back up, but don't accept it in your life. Don't let it become part of your identity. I'm, a, I'm, just, a, I'm just an alcoholic forever. I'm just a... Bad husband, bad wife forever. I'll be depressed for the rest of my life. The, the doctors already diagnosed me. It's chronic. It's over. You know, it's just, I, it's not that I'm angry. I'm just bipolar. It's, it's just part of me. And you know what's crazy? I'm not saying that's not, those aren't real diagnoses. All I'm saying is through Christ. Christ is greater than any diagnosis that you have. You can have, come on, you can have peace. You could be loving. You could be kind because it's his spirit living and leading you. Let's keep going. So he's there being tempted by the devil. For 40 days and 40 nights, he fasted. And became very hungry. Now that's, that's we're going to go into a 21 day fast. But Jesus did like a real gangster fast. <laughs> don't even try to do what he did. Because I don't want to be responsible for your death. <laughs> but pastor, and they think we're a cult or something. He told me to do a fast. <laughs> Not like Jesus though. Because Jesus fast was without food and liquid, no water, no food for 40 days. Crazy. 
he would only be able to get through it through the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, I want you to get this. The Spirit led Jesus into a 40-day fast. And because the Spirit led Jesus into a 40-day fast, the Spirit helped him get through a 40, supernaturally get through a 40-day fast. I want, there's some things that you can't do, but you can do, when the, you can do it when the Spirit of God is leading you. But you got to make sure the Spirit of God is leading you. That's why we, we just mess it up. You said the Spirit of God told you and he didn't tell you to. The Spirit of God, the first day I met him, the Spirit of God told me deep down in my, in my little gut right here, rivers of living water flowing. He was the one. And then we see the relationship and we say, you know what? He ain't the one. And then you go back and say, yes, he is, pastor, because the Holy Spirit gave me confirmation on the first day. What was confirmation? We both liked Coke. And, and <laughs> <laughs> So you went to, where we, well, we went to McDonald's and it was crazy. He ordered a Coke. I ordered a Coke. <laughs> so that's your confirmation, Coke. And then it doesn't work out, and this is what happens. It doesn't work out. What happens now? And this is the reason. You weren't led by the Spirit of God. We need to know the voice of God and the voice of our flesh and the voice of our crush. The vo come on, the voice of the past. And we need to know the difference between those, the, the, all those other voices. Because if you don't know the difference between those voices, this 2021 can be... You can, I say, the, the, the wrong voice can lead you to massive destruction. It'll lead you out of the church. It'll lead you out of ministry. It'll lead you out of your joy. It'll lead you out of your marriage. It'll lead you out of your destiny. It'll lead you, it'll lead you out of a career. The wrong voice. So let's keep going. He fasted and became very what? He became very hungry. Now, why did he become hungry? Now, I did some study just on on fasting, even on this, when you do a fast extreme like Jesus did, there comes a time in the fast that you no longer are hungry. Your appetite is gone. But right before you're ready to die, there comes a point you're starving to death, your hunger returns right before you die. So Jesus, would, was, his body was at the point of starving to death. The hunger just returned. He's on the brink. His body's at the brink. Now I want to understand, Jesus' body could die. Because Jesus' body did die. So in this moment where Jesus is the weakest. He hasn't ate, hasn't drank for 40 days, starving to death, the devil shows up. The devil will always come in your weakest moments. Very strategic. He'll wait, he'll wait, he'll wait, until the perfect opportunity to suggest a bad idea. Because when you're hurting and when you're in pain and you're weak, you, we all are looking for an escape. We want to escape the process. We want to get away. And the devil will gladly give us, give you an option. You would have never took the option if you weren't starving. You would have never meditated or contemplated or entertained the option if you weren't in a position that your heart just broke. You just got fired from your job. Your girlfriend just left you. Your husband walked out on you. 
your wife. He said, I don't want to be with you anymore. There's pressure at work. And in that moment, you got to be super alert because the devil is looking for a perfect opportunity to give you a temptation or just a little suggestion. And you start thinking, and if you don't watch it, you'll justify your bad decision. Before you make a bad decision, you start going, this is what you start doing. You start selling yourself on a dumb idea. So let's look at this. During that time, the devil came, well, he was real hungry, and said to him, what the devil do? The devil still comes the same way through words and conversations. That's why when we're doing this 21 day fast, we're not just fasting food. There might be some conversations and people you need to fast. Because when you get around them, it's not good conversation. It's gossip, it's division, it's judgmentalism, it's full of lust, it's dirty language, it's, it's a whole bunch of, it's, 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 it's dirty jokes. Someone right now wants to take over your mindset, and I would say someone, the devil will use someone. I've never personally seen the devil come to me. But I've recognized his lies and I've recognized his verbiage through people. Usually when the devil wants to take you out, he takes, brings somebody in your life that has language and conversations to take you out. Words. And that's why the Bible says, don't be deceived. He says, evil or bad communication corrupts good manners or good, or good character or good morals. The enemy will come in through just a conversation. And that's why your beautiful daughter all of a sudden turns into a monster. He said, what happened to my daughter? She just hooked up with a monster spirit. That's not who she is. I know that's not who she is. But she's now becoming a byproduct of the conversations she's been in. So the devil's speaking now through so many ways. Now, we got social media. You don't need somebody to come in your life. All you need is a good or bad YouTube video. There was a video that I, that I, that I flipped through today. And there was some lady on there, and she, this was the title. This is why I don't go to church. I already know that that's a demonic, when it's all said and done, conversation trying to get me to a point that I no longer want to be part of a church. I no longer want to be part of vision. I, I, and so I already know where that's headed. I didn't click it, but I know it's demonic. And while I'm listening, I'm in conversation. And if I just got hurt in the church, it's so easy to agree with it. Because I guarantee you, she, she don't even know. She don't know that the devil's using her to get people just like her. Let me tell you my experience. Have you had that experience? You start saying, well, yeah. I was wondering if I was going crazy. Yeah, that's me. I see me and you, you and me. And you know what's so crazy? You exchange your church, you exchange your pastor, because now the devil becomes your pastor. Now that voice is going to become a familiar voice in your life because it's going to start chasing you down and taking you farther and farther away from God, farther and farther away from your destiny, farther and farther away from truth, farther and farther away from happiness, farther and farther away from God's purpose being fulfilled in your life. We're not rushing through scripture, right? Because we don't have to. We're in verse 3. Right? Now, 
We're just going to go through this conversation and we're going to be done. Because there's so much more conversation, but let's just go through this conversation. If you want to hear me going through the whole 11 verses, download 9 o'clock service. I went through everything. But I covered stuff that I didn't cover. Everything I covered here, I didn't cover in the 9 o'clock. So, so it's like part one and part two. So we're good. Well, pastor, that's not fair. I want to go through all 11 verses. Well, read it yourself. <laughs> oh, I didn't know I could do that. <laughs> oh, my, my bad, my bad. <laughs> Whoa. Well, you put me in my place, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that's what the fast is all about is that we start spending a long time with God and we start getting God's word in our heart and we start developing a relationship with God and we start getting revelation from God I want you to stop, uh, stop agreeing with the devil what, what, what do you mean pastor well this is what the devil tells you you know when you read it you can't understand it it's so confusing and then you start like a parakeet repeating the devil's lie in your life. You know, when I read it, I don't understand it. But yet, when you were in the world, you used to read all kinds of instructions and manuals at your job. And you understood all of it. But now you can't understand the Bible. What part don't you understand? Jesus was tempted. What does that mean? It means Jesus was tempted. <laughs> Jesus fasted. What does that mean? He didn't eat food. <laughs> but when you start agreeing with the devil that you can't understand the word, this is what's going to happen. You'll read it and your mind will shut down because you'll become spiritually blind and your ears you'll hear and not understand. Not because it's not understandable, it's because you got into agreement with the demonic idea and it becomes your reality. All right, let's keep going. We're, we're done right here though. During that time, the devil came and said to him, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become loaves of bread. But Jesus told him, no, the scriptures say, 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 no, the scriptures say. You know why I just said that over and over? No, the scriptures say, because that's exactly how you overcome every single temptation. When the devil comes with a bad idea, you immediately say, no, the scriptures say. Do you know why some of us can't overcome temptation? Your no takes too long to come out of your mouth. And your no has no power behind it. You're like, when Jesus said no, it had an exclamation point. When we say no, it has a question mark. No? Well, do you want it? No? You want it, man. No. Yeah, you do. Uh, I don't. <laughs> and before you know it, you're all involved in the mess because your no wasn't an emphatic no. I'm done with my whole life. I'm done with that addiction. I'm done with the lust. I'm done with the pornography. I'm done in the name of Jesus. No. Get it. No. And then you say no. And then you say the scriptures say You just don't say no to the lie. You replace it with the truth. And for some of you, the devil's telling you, you're nothing. You're a failure. You're condemned. You're never going to be a good Christian. And you know, well, God will never forgive you for what you did. And you can never be involved in ministry again after the big fall that you had. And you got to tell, devil, no. 
Because the word of God says, if I've sinned, if I confess my sins, God is faithful and just to forgive me and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. The word of God says there's no condemnation and guilt and shame for those who are Jesus Christ. The devil says this, oh, all things passed away and everything has become new. I am a new creation in Christ. That's who I am. Devil, back up. Someone said, speak the word. And this is what I want to say. Before you can speak the word, you got to store the word. In these 21 days, we got to get some word in us. Because your opinions aren't going to scare no devils away. How loud do you scream? Is that going to scare? You can't just say, devil, back up. <laughs> this is what devil's going to do. He's say, what? What are you going to do about it? You don't even have no weapon on you. What are you going to do about it? You know what your spiritual weapon is? Is the truth. You know what the truth is? Is the word of God. You cannot fight the temptation. It's not that you're weak. It's that you have no weapon. So I'm saying, get your weapon out and use it. You know how you use the word? You speak it. We're going to end it right here. I want to read a scripture, though, about storing. The, someone say, store the word. In Psalms 119.11, it says this. I have stored your word in my heart. I have what? That I might not sin against you. He said, what's stopping me from giving into that temptation is what stopped Jesus from giving into the temptation is he had the word to fight against the idea, against the thoughts, against the lies, against the deception. So in a 21 day fast, we're not just sitting, you know, just moping around, not eating and talking about, I can't wait till the fast is over and fantasizing what you are gonna eat. The conversations are with immature believers, when the fast is over, where are you gonna eat? Oh, man, I'm going to go to Claim Jumpers and order one of old T-Bone steaks. <laughs> Not me. I'm going, to, I'm going to Los Seals and I'm going to order some of them ribs. That's what I'm going to do. Woo! I can't wait till the fast is over. How about you? Me too. By the way, why are we doing this fast? Seems kind of legalistic, don't you? Talking yourself out of your purpose. What we're doing in these 21 days, we are spending alone time with God. What we're doing in these 21 days, we are hearing from God. What we're doing in these 21 days is preparing ourselves for 2021. And we're going to store God's word in our heart. You know what you need to do? You need to get a new Bible. And then you just need to start outlining and reading it. You know what we're going to do? You know what we're going to do in 2021? This is our vision. Everyone, reach one in 2021. And we're going to focus on one. And you know what we're going to start reading? We're going to read the book of Matthew. We're going to go right through the book of Matthew. And we're going to stay in the book of Matthew until we're done with the book of Matthew. And when we're done with the book of Matthew, then we're going to go to another one. Praise God. You're getting quiet up in here. We're doing, come on, I'm preparing you to handle, come on, it doesn't matter, come on, it doesn't matter what trials are waiting for us in 21, 2021, the devil himself can show up and we're ready because we got the word stored up in us and we're ready for any temptation or struggle. And that's it. But the scriptures say, People do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. So Jesus, we'll end with this. Jesus is hungry to the max. Pain. Starvation at a level you've never experienced. When you're hungry, you say this. I'm starving to death. And all it means is you just didn't eat breakfast. It's 12 o'clock and you're starving to death. And you woke up at 10. (laughs) 
Just laughing like, come on, four days. <laughs> right? But he was starving to death. And the devil comes with an image. There were some stones. And the devil says this, Jesus, see those stones? Don't they look kind of like little loaves of bread? When you're fasting, you see food that's not even there. When you're fasting for real, when you pass by in and out you smell the burgers. When you're fasting, yeah, two miles away. Yeah, two miles away. When, you, when you're fasting, when, when, when you're fasting, it seems like every commercial is a food commercial. When you're fasting, you get dumb. You start going to Food Channel and just start looking at every one of those shows. Oh my gosh, I look so good. Don't do that. Do not lead yourself into temptation. So the devil took Jesus into that moment. And all he wanted, said, what did he want? This is what he wanted. He wanted Jesus to agree with his suggestion and take action on it. Jesus could have turned those stones into bread. And he could have relieved the pressure. He could have satisfied his hunger, but he would not completed his assignment. The devil does not bring temptation without massive, de de I want you, without massive deception and without a plan to destroy your life, your purpose, your family, and your children. He's out to kill, steal, and destroy. I know it looks innocent and it looks justifiable, but it's so dangerous. One temptation that you give into can cause literal death. Jesus said no. If he would have said yes, we would not have a savior today. If he would have said yes, the devil would have took over his life and guided him and led him for the rest of his life. Just through one temptation, leadership Destiny, purpose, salvation for the world was at stake. The devil doesn't show you what's at stake. He only shows you the stake. He doesn't show you what's at stake, just the stake. But behind it, he don't show you the poison. He don't show you the death. He don't show you the destruction. He don't show you the sickness. He don't show you nothing. He don't show you hell. All he shows you is the stake. How do you overcome temptation? Say no. How do you overcome temptation? Say no. And number two, speak the word. Someone say, speak the word. Speak the word. So let's start getting the word of God. How many enjoyed today? We're, now, I, I tell you this. We're going to dive in. Wednesday night, we're coming together. Some way, Wednesday night. We're coming together online, and let's worship together online. Okay? I'm going to have Pastor Robert close us out. But I'm going to say this. There's a devil speaking. And he will, he will even tell you this. Hey, I suggest you don't give your life to Jesus today. I suggest that. And I suggest that you go party one more time. Because you got some weed at home that you haven't finished. And that would be a waste of money. And you got to be a good budgeter. You know that, right? You got a budget, you know, be a good steward of the Lord's stuff, you know. And actually, it's, it's just herbs, so you're good. Oregano weed, no difference. So why don't you just smoke oregano then? Robert, please go. I can get going here. Is God good? Let's give the Lord a big hand. Yes, awesome. Let's all stand up, you guys, at this time. How many received the word of God today? Isn't that great? So Wednesday, we are starting our corporate fast. Please join us. 
Um, if you've never fasted before, just, just step out and start it. Even if you skip breakfast, you skip lunch, start it with us. Um, you can go on our website, you can look it up, different types of fasts. You could do a partial fast, maybe from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Then you'll eat some salads or soups. You could do a Daniel fast with usually fruits and nuts and those sort of things. And, but just start on Wednesday and watch God begin to move. In a moment, we're going to open up our front section for prayer here. If you need prayer about anything, we want to pray with you today. Maybe you're struggling in relationships. Maybe it's a marriage. You're struggling right now. You've been thinking about um, separation, divorce. Come up here. Get some prayer. Maybe you're sick in your body. You need a healing. The Bible says to come forward and have the elders lay hands on you. Agree and it'll be done. Maybe you got a bad report from the doctor. Whatever it is. Maybe it's finances. Maybe it's your business, your business owner struggling right now, trying to find out what's the next move for my business. You need some wisdom. You need some guidance. That's where the Holy Spirit comes in. And we want to open up the section so we could pray with you. But here's the last thing. Let's make sure before we leave this campus today, this property, let's make sure that everyone is on their way to heaven. Let's sign up everyone for the kingdom of heaven the bible says this there's what you call the lamb's book of life it's a book that's in heaven that records all the names of those who give their life to jesus the bible says in the book of revelation all the names who are not found in this book will be cast into the lake of fire so if your name is in this book, you get to go to heaven. The Bible says if your name is not in this book, you'll be cast into the lake of fire. Say, so Pastor, well, how do I get my name in the book? How do I give my life to Jesus? Very simple. All you have to do is accept Jesus, confess him as Lord. It's not about a religion. It's not about a church. It's about placing your faith in Jesus. So if you're saying, Pastor, you know what? Look at this. We already got one, two, three, four. We got five. We got six. I, I need Jesus right now. I want to accept Jesus right now. Here we go. We already have people coming up. If you're saying, Pastor, I want to get my name in the book. I need to get right with God. I want God to forgive me of all of my sins. I want to make sure if I die today, I would go straight to heaven. If you want to get your name recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life, if you want to be forgiven of all your sins, get ready to raise your hands when I count to three. One, two, three. Raise your hands right now. So I want Jesus. I want my name in the book. See another hand there. See a hand way in the back. I want my name in the book. I want to give my life to God. I need Jesus. I see a bunch of hands that were raised. I want you to come forward. Come meet these that are already up here. Come on down. If you want Jesus, you want to be forgiven of your sins, come on down. Come, come, come. 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 Like a flame. This is your day. This is what we're going to do. I'm going to start counting here. All the people that came up here. I said, Pastor, why are you going to count? Because heaven is counting. Like I said, when you say this prayer, your name's going to get recorded. As I count each person, I want you guys at your seats to do one thing. As I'm counting, I want you guys to take 20, 30 seconds. I want you to ask the person you're standing next to. You're going to ask them this. If you were to die today... Where are you going? If you were to die today, where are you going? If the person next to you says, I don't know, say, come on. Take 20 seconds as I count. Take 20 seconds. One, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight. 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46. Give Jesus a shout of praise. Yeah. This is your day. Now, everybody that's up here, I'm going to lead you right now in the prayer. I'm going to say the prayer. You repeat it after me. As soon as you say this prayer, you got somebody next to you, beside you. We're going to exchange information. We're going to pray with you. And then we're going to help you and sign you up for your next step. What is your next step? The classes here are called Starting at the Way. What is your next step? Starting at the Way. We'll sign you up. We're going to start those classes next week. You guys will be the first class of 2021. So after we're done prayer, hang tight for a couple minutes. And we have everybody covered. We might need a few more leaders. I think we got everyone covered. Yeah. Let's everyone bow their head and close their eyes. You're watching this online right now. This prayer is for you as well. You're watching this online. You're at home. You're at work. You're driving a car, driving a truck. Say this prayer. You're going to get saved. Now, those online, you don't have somebody there to talk with you. You're going to go to igotsaved.com. igotsaved.com. Sign up there. We'll help you with your next step. Everybody here in the auditorium, bow your head and close your eyes. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I ask forgiveness of all my sins. I repent of all the wrong that I've done. And I turn to you, Jesus. Today, I'm asking you, Jesus, to come into my life and take my life over. I belong to you, God. Thank you. I am saved. I am born again. I'm on my way to heaven. Holy Spirit, fill me so I can be led by the Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.